This is AutoLine Daily, the show that we dedicate to all of you enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Hey, looks like someone at Ford found a box of chips someplace because the Bronco is finally starting to roll down the assembly line. Ford got 190,000 reservations for the off-road SUV, and 125,000 of them have already been converted into orders. The Bronco is made at the Wayne Assembly Plant, which used to make the Focus and C-Max. And Ford expects to see a billion-dollar turnaround at that plant by dropping those cars and adding the Bronco. Jay Leno helped Tesla make it official. The Model S Plaid is officially the world's fastest production car. Leno whooshed down the drag strip at Panoma in California in only 9.2 seconds at 152 miles an hour. The run was taped for his television show, Jay Leno's Garage, and was timed by the National Hot Rod Association to make it all official. Leno later gushed about the car, pointing out it's faster than any million-dollar Ferrari or even a three-and-a-half million-dollar Bugatti. General Motors already has two EV battery plants in the works, but GM President Mark Roy says that's not enough. He says GM will announce plans this week to open more battery plants in the U.S. because it needs more capacity to reach its goal of going all electric by 2035. Volkswagen of America says a data breach impacted millions of Audi owners and shoppers in the U.S. and Canada. Someone stole the personal information of 3.3 million customers and even prospective buyers. The hack came through a vendor that VW uses for digital sales and marketing. Mostly phone numbers and email addresses were stolen, but 90,000 Audi owners had their driver's license numbers taken, and some had date of birth, social security number, and account number stolen. VW will offer Audi owners free credit protection services, and it believes the data was stolen at some point between August of 2019 through May of this year. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. When Ford came out with the current version of the GT, it said it was only going to build 500 of them. But demand came in so strong that it raised that to 1,350. Auto Forecast Solutions says the last one's going to roll off the line in December of 2022. That limited production's necessary to make sure that the car holds its value or even appreciates. The GT costs $500,000, but if you go for the liquid carbon option, which has a carbon fiber body and carbon fiber wheels and even titanium lug nuts, you can add another $250,000 to the price. Well, here's something that you don't see every day. Early last year, Baozhang, which is a sub-brand of the GM SAIC Wuling joint venture in China, launched a new vehicle. They called it the RC5, and there was a wagon version called the RC5W. But due to what they described as marketing issues, the wagon was discontinued after only seven months. But here's the kicker. Baozhen is relaunching the exact same car, but under a new name. Now they call it the Valley, with an I on the end. But it's hard to see how going from RC5W to Valley is going to make any difference. The Valley is powered by a one and a half liter turbocharged engine, and it runs between $12,500 and $16,500. Maserati is testing the new Gran Turismo Coupe in Modena, Italy. While there will still be versions with piston power, it's also going to be the first Maserati available with a 100% electric powertrain. The new car has a similar shape to the outgoing model, but looks to have some styling inspired by the MC20 hypercar With prototypes undergoing testing, it should not be long before Maserati reveals the production car. 
Sergio Marchion relaunched the Alfa Romeo brand with a lot of fanfare a decade ago. He had high hopes it would become a high-volume premium brand and generate a ton of profits for FCA. It didn't work. Sales of the Giulia and Stelvio have come in far below expectations. And now, under Stellantis, CEO Carlos Tavares says every brand in the company has one decade to prove itself or he's going to drop it. So what's Alfa Romeo going to do? That's what we'll be talking about on AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. We've got Larry Dominique, the head of Alfa Romeo North America, coming on the show. So join Gary and I as we let you listen in to the top executives in the automotive industry. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. 3D printing keeps making significant inroads in the auto industry. Male just opened a 3D printing center in Germany capable of printing parts out of plastic, aluminum, and stainless steel. Remember last year we reported it's printing pistons for Porsche to use in racing. It's also printing air charge coolers, oil filter housings, and even structural parts. Male says it can easily make components that are 30 by 30 by 40 centimeters, that's almost 12 by 12 by 16 inches. There is some rework needed depending on the component. They may have to have some cutting and if they printed threaded sections, the threads usually need to be cleaned up. One of the greatest opportunities for 3D printing could be with service parts. In the US, automakers legally have to make service parts for 10 years. That means they have to store a bunch of tooling that does not get used very much. With 3D printing, there's no need to hold on to most of that tooling. Despite a lot of naysayers about fuel cells, a number of automakers continue to develop the technology, and now you can add Jaguar Land Rover to the list. It announced it will begin prototype tests of a hydrogen-powered Defender later this year. It's partnering with Delta Motorsport, AVL, Morelli Automotive Systems, and UK Battery Industrialization Center. It's all part of JLR's goal of hitting zero tailpipe emissions by 2036. Speaking of alternatively powered vehicles, Chinese automaker Geely is developing methanol cars. It's already built 10,000 methanol powered vehicles, including commercial trucks. This even includes tests in Iceland to create methanol with carbon dioxide as a way to decrease greenhouse gases. But methanol can also be created from coal, and China has huge coal deposits, so methanol could help it become more energy independent. Geely's chairman, Li Chufu, says the whole effort might fail, but they're going to go ahead and keep on developing it anyway. And with that, we wrap up today's report. Thank you for making AutoLine Daily a part of your day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.